As hard as it may be to believe people are planning for summer, Breck's got something they want to tell you about. The crime session is ended. The regular session is on the way. We'll have a conversation with John Cuvion about that. And this gentleman behind me representing the 6th Congressional District here in Louisiana will talk with us about his upcoming reelection and what's ahead. Roll it, Kirk. U.S. Congressman Garrett Graves uh, has been in that position since about 2015, and he's here with us right now to talk about all things Washington, D.C., and, of course, his reelection. I've known Congressman Graves for some time now. Good morning, Garrett, as we are recording this. How are you? Hey, good morning. How you doing? Well, so let's, let's talk a little bit about what is happening with this redistricting, man. I mean, everyone's asking you about it. Uh, everyone wants to know what you're going to do. You've announced your reelection bid. What? Before we get to that, let's talk about the redistricting process. What are your thoughts about that? Sure. Uh, well, look, uh, there were new maps that were drawn for the 2022 elections. And Clay, those maps went through about an 18-month period of public meetings, of a roadshow traveling all around. Louisiana, uh, in making sure that the public was aware, the public had an opportunity to provide input. Let me say it again, 18 months. Yet in January of this year, the legislature and governor and others took about three days, literally dropped a map on, I think it was a Tuesday morning. It was on the governor's desk by Friday morning. And, and so there really wasn't an opportunity for public input or public participation and the other thing is, is that the map was done under false pretext. The legislators and others were told that, uh, and there wasn't. It simply wasn't true. In fact, uh, Woody Jenkins went and testified before the Senate. He actually read exactly what the court said and made clear in the testimony that that was not the case. So um, without getting into too much detail, just quickly note that there are really three criteria that you have to follow. It's communities of interest, it's compactness of a district, and then also taking into consideration racial implications. And the, and the maps that they've drawn, you connect Denham Springs, Baton Rouge, Gonzales, and Monroe, which has no community of interest alignment there. Another district does uh, the, the areas there like Donaldsonville, Baton Rouge, to Shreveport. Uh, a fourth district goes uh, from East Baton Rouge, Paris, Baton Rouge area, down to New Orleans, and a fifth district, excuse me, a fourth district goes um, from uh, sort of the Livingston Parish, kind of the eastern side of Livingston Parish, over to the east of Denham Springs, and Walker, and goes on around the North Shore, Plaquemines Parish, into Metairie. And, and so it really is, I mean, it looked like a two-year-old with a crayon through these <laughs> um, Do you feel targeted? <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. Look, there's no doubt. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say exactly what happened. I, I I endorsed someone that I've known for 30 years uh, that I think would have done an excellent job as governor of Louisiana. Um, and, and let me say it again, as a former coworker, as a friend, somebody that I think had a great vision, had clear uh, uh, skills and, and, and evidence that they could govern. And, um, and, and so the governor took it personally and, and is simply trying to carry out some degree of of vindictiveness and, and look, I'm fine with that. If that's how he wants to play games, then that's fine. But but don't don't harm Louisiana in the process. If you have it out for me, that's fine. But don't harm Louisiana in the process. And that's where I think they made a huge mistake. A number of legislators have called and emailed, uh, reached out to us and expressed strong concerns about what what they were told. Um, and so you know, look, the, the short answer is, is yes, but. By taking the capital region, Clay, and breaking it up into four districts, you really have destroyed communities of interest, and you no longer have one person who's accountable for things like a new bridge crossing the Mississippi River, someone to fight for flood protection in the aftermath of the 2016 flood. Um, LSU and the future of, of the university in our region is somebody who's going to come in and address the traffic problems that we have in the capital region, somebody that's going to be responsible for ensuring that federal law enforcement is involved in, in helping to solve this crime crisis in our region. You can't break it up into four districts, yeah. one center in Shreveport, one in Monroe, one in Metairie, and one in New Orleans. 
Well, look, we're going to take a quick break, Congressman, and then come back. I want to talk with you a little bit more about that. Obviously, Super Tuesday has gone by us now, and we're going to be picking up speed as we get into the political energy that's coming now. So we're talking with U.S. Representative Garrett Graves, another segment with him on The Clay Young Show, next. the best of both worlds, Baton Rouge's best selection of premium cigars and an unparalleled cigar lounge experience. Located in Town Center, it's Don Juan Cigar Company and Don Juan Cigar Bar. Walk into our amazing humidor at Don Juan Cigar Company, then walk next door and experience the plush atmosphere of Don Juan Cigar Bar. Come see why we are Baton Rouge's cigar and good time authority. Don Juan Cigar Company and Don Juan Cigar Bar. Back with Congressman Garrett Graves and going into the break, we were talking about the redistricting and I want to get to some of the the recent political news with Super Tuesday and the presidential election that's on the horizon. But just doubling back, there are four districts now that overlap the capital region and you announced that you are running for reelection in the sixth. The demographics of this of the sixth are different now, Congressman, and, and it'll be a steeper climb. Why choose the sixth to do that when you can choose one of the other districts well clay what we what we said is we're running for re-election and that um effectively we're not giving any credibility to the map that that has been passed by the legislature because that map is patently illegal it's unconstitutional uh, as a matter of fact uh, the fifth circuit court of appeals is taking this up straight away it's not going to federal district court it's going straight to the appellate court um the court very quickly impaneled a uh, three-judge panel it, it'll be uh, heard before the court both the preliminary injunction and the merits of the map uh, just in the next few weeks and so um, we are confident that the court's going to throw the map out that they're going to do something that's legal and constitutional and more importantly something that's just rational and passes the common sense test so we'll be running for a district okay. that is anchored in the capital region uh, where where i have uh, was born and raised um, and so we're not giving any credibility to the map and whether it's the first district or the sixth district that by the time the, the new maps are drawn, uh, we will be running in the district that is anchored in the capital region. You know, I got to ask when this issue came up after there was really the idea that there was going to have to be another majority minority district. Why didn't state Republicans and state Democrats Democrats work together? to get to a solution before getting to this right now. There's been a lot of time to work this out. Why hasn't it happened? Well, uh, look, the, the legislature uh, for the 2022 elections, they, they passed the map with a two thirds majority mm -hmm. in both the House and the Senate. So, so there was strong support for the maps that have been put in place. And, you know, Clay, I think that even going back and looking at the 2022 election, um, in, in that election, uh, we, we won with over 80 percent of the vote i mean keep in mind you had republicans democrats independents all of them on the ballot at the same time as us and we won with over 80 percent of the vote look i, I don't know that 80 percent of my family likes me that much <laughs> and so you know it it shows that there's some commonality uh or communities of interest in that district that the fact that that you had that sort of consensus but i want to make note it was the highest rate in the state and and so I, I think that you already had a map that seemed to make sense. There was no reason for the state to come back and revisit them, with the exception of, of trying to extract revenge, yeah. which I don't think is a good reason. Yeah. Um, so, so you're right, though, that Republicans and Democrats could come together and draw a map that actually is, is legal and constitutional. They chose to not do that, uh, I think, simply for political reasons. Um, but but unfortunately, the court's going to be stepping in yeah. and likely making the call. And and you've been clear that this is really about retaliation. You supported uh, WAGs for governor, and uh, you you've said that this is a retaliation uh, effort by the current governor, which is which is interesting in its in its own right. Let's talk national politics now. Super Tuesday is behind us. Let's not kid ourselves. The inevitability of a Biden Trump rematch is indeed on the horizon. And I worry, Congressman, about all of the circus environment that's around politics right now. There are issues from public safety to infrastructure to the economy to immigration that require serious attention 
Yet this political national clown show seems to put the real issues on the back burner. Be the grown up in the room on this issue as it relates to this politically. How do we move beyond that and actually get to re real results? Well, first, Clay, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we need to be addressing the crisis at the southern border. We need to be addressing the crisis that is energy policy that's resulting in our dependence on China, Russia, Iran, uh, Venezuela, but at the same time having higher prices for energy like gasoline and utility payments. We need to focus on the, the national budget and the debt that uh, today, if the debt was due to each individual taxpayer, we would have to pay $256,000 per taxpayer, something I can't afford. Uh, outrageous what's going on right now. And the fact that, and you nailed it, Clay, the fact that we are focusing on the circus-like environment is, is really outrageous because what it does is it takes these true crises that are out there and it, and it puts them on the back burner. These are the things that need to be on the front burner. We need to address our traffic problem in Baton Rouge in the capital region. We need to address our crime problem. We need to improve education. And we need to address at least those three national issues that I brought up. And so the way to do it, I think, is that we've got to have voters, we've got to have people like you that, that have an audience continuing to talk about what the priorities are. It is not creating a circus-like environment and just taking shots at the other side. It's actually sharing substance in how you're going to address these crises, how you're going to solve these problems, whether it's the local issues, the, uh, again, the crime and safety issues, yeah. the threats to our family, or it's these national issues like border security that have to be addressed. Uh, Cinnamon, give me an extra 30 seconds in this segment. Uh, quickly here, and as you hear, I got about 30 seconds left. How will you contribute to bringing down the volume a little bit, Congressman, and making certain we remember that these are the issues of the people and we need to be focused on that? Two things. One is, is that every time we talk to President Trump, we continue to bring up what is truly important. And the second thing is, is that we ignore or neglect all the noise in the circus-like environment and try and pull things back into the real substance and the challenges that Americans are experiencing and feeling every single day. Well, Congressman, the next time you're in the sixth, you got to come see me here in studio, man, so we could talk more about these issues. Love to. Love to. Uh, all right, Congressman Garrett Graves in Washington, D.C., talking with us about those issues, and we'll have him back uh, when he's back in the district. So, you know, the regular session just ended, the special session on crime, the regular session that we deal with every year is on the way. John Cuvion is here with us, sitting at the desk, and we'll talk about what's on the way as the Clay Young Show continues. John Cuvion with JMC Analytics is back with us, and uh, we're going to talk about the special session that just ended, and we'll have some conversation about the regular session that's on the way, but just had a conversation with Congressman Graves. I referenced Super Tuesday having gone by. What are your thoughts on the results of that? Pretty predictable, but what are your thoughts? So number one, it was a slam dunk for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Number two, one of the things that genuinely puzzled me was Nikki Haley basically trying to adopt a strategy of basically what I would call getting the liberal Republican vote. Literally the only place where I saw she had any appreciable strength would be in college towns and or suburban areas in Northern Virginia. In other words, places Donald Trump is extremely unlikely to carry. And that was really her sole strength. Uh, the other thing that was interesting too is there was a lot more Republican enthusiasm than there was for the Democrats. Yeah, well, I mean, are we supposed to really pretend that she had a shot at hell? No, but I think it's a I case. I mean, I'm just, yeah. I, yeah. She did not have a shot, however, if she was going to try to hang in as long as she did, for her to abruptly cut loose on Super Tuesday, to me, she should have at least carried on a few more weeks because, of course, she would have had possibly more favorable territory, say, in Ohio and Illinois and so forth. She got boat raced in her own state. Yeah, that didn't yeah. help. I mean, Trump has a stranglehold on the Republican Party. Most Republicans are afraid to publicly criticize him on anything. Right. It's inevitable. I mean, I, I guess that we'll play along with the charade, but okay, now you've got Biden, Trump too. Yes. Um, the president has kept most of his support around him, obviously, but there were some fringe supporters who uh, balloted uncommitted mm -hmm. as a protest to what's happening in the Middle East. What are your thoughts on that? And, and what about President Biden's ability to seal the deal with so right. many questions? So number one, President Biden's in serious trouble this fall. Number two, I'm of the opinion that 95 to 97 percent of the vote is pretty much etched in stone and won't change, which leads me to number three. The people who are literally going to decide this election, I'm talking like 
50,000 to 100,000 in a few states. We're talking about people who either A, voted for Biden under what I would think was a false bill of goods, or B, if you have lower democratic intensity in areas like, say, college campuses or inner cities, uh -huh. You know, a thousand votes here, a thousand votes there, that could theoretically affect the results in Arizona and Georgia. Yeah, but isn't this really a case of pro and anti President Trump? Very much. President Biden carried a lot of areas because Republicans, specifically Republican women, did not want Donald Trump. Correct. And going into this election now, he's got all these questions about his age and whether or not he would even finish another term. This is a case of do we want more Trump or not? And the easiest job Donald Trump has is actually reminiscent of what Edwin Edwards did in 1983, which was remind people of the quote unquote good times mm -hmm. when he was previously a chief executive. That's all Donald Trump has to do. Well, look, I don't want to hog the segment yes. talking about that because we're going to have a lot of time. Okay, right. special session just Back ended. here to Baton Rouge. <laughs> regular <laughs> sessions on the way. Grade for the crime session and thoughts on the upcoming regular. Slam dunk for Governor Landry. Basically everything he wanted got passed. The most important thing was getting, con at least from the standpoint of Republicans, yeah. getting concealed carry passed. But by the way, one of the things that does not get mentioned that should be, when you don't have a Democratic governor who's exerting pressure on members of his own party, you had six main mainly rural Democrats who actually voted for this concealed carry bill. Yeah. So it was technically a bipartisan effort, but going to regular session, what I see happening is this. There's obviously gonna be some Republican agenda items that'll be on the, the, the list, mm -hmm. but more importantly, bills that Governor Edwards vetoed and the Republicans wanted, one that immediately comes to mind is the annual canvas that they want to do with the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of bills are gonna get basically slam dunked through the legislature this time because you're not going to have any visible opposition or excuse me not visible enough to be you know 53 representatives or 20 senators what would be his biggest win in this session on the other side of it predict the future in terms of governor landry yes if let's pretend I think the thing that is starting to bubble up now is the Constitutional Convention. Oh man, I know about that. Now that has a good and a bad side to it. The bad you think? Yeah. The bad side, and this is getting into the risky aspects of it, let's say they start trying to tinker with things like the homestead exemption yeah. and or other tax exemptions, because the dirty little secret is all these changes that they're contemplating still have to be voted on by the general public. Look, once once the we've gone through the process, I'll get you back here to talk. That is a segment yes. on its own. Yes. All right, thank you, John. Coming up, we'll be talking about what's happening at Breck. But there's a community program going on right now that's helping kids in District 10, helping kids not only learn, but communicate and be more productive. It's hands on our children in District 10. You can see the details there at the Leo S. Butler Center. But as a reference, next, the summer is coming up. One of my favorite people, Cheryl Michelet, is here. Can't wait to tell you a little backstory on that. And we'll talk about what's happening at Brett next. Kirk Michelet is sitting up straight in master control right about now because Cheryl Michelet, <laughs> his much better half, is here with us. And Cheryl is the director of communications at Breck. And uh, we've known each other a very long time. Mm -hmm. What is Imagine Your Parks? Imagine Your Parks goes back 20 years when the community imagined with Breck mm -hmm. saying that they wanted more quality and less quantity yeah. and actually passed a new tax in a very anti-tax time uh, with the community. I, I'm not sure that ever ended, but right. it, was, it, was, it was an anti-tax time, but they thought that parks were so important mm -hmm. they agreed to uh, renew or to create a new tax. We have spent the last 20 years doing things like building 12 community parks in every part of the parish. Splash pads we didn't used to have. Mm -hmm. Dog parks. Yeah. All, a lot of the things now that are new or in innovative came because the community imagined with us. So you've done a lot obviously out at the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of dollars have been invested mm -hmm. into that. Talk about what's happening at the zoo right now for people who've not been out to that part of the parish. When you come out it is so exciting. So um, right now we're putting the finishing touches on a new entry. Look at that. Uh, Gav, this is drone video from the construction company. So that is the new entry building. And uh, in there is double, well, maybe not double, but more room for summer camps. Um, that's where staff will be. That's where people can rent rooms for birthday parties or 
reunions. It's just going to be awesome. And the, you're going through the park now to get to this building. So wow. Greenwood Community Park and the zoo will be working together. Yeah. Um, there was going to be a new giraffe feeding station where you can feed giraffes. Nice. There's an underwater uh, pygmy hippo exhibit. And there's a really cool playground in the park with these bears. Yeah. Then the, you go down this huge slide and it, it cost over a million dollars. Have we reserved uh, which paddock Johnny Asian is going to be in? I'm sure the kids will want to <laughs> he grace ha there He has said, him. that's the playground. <laughs> uh, he has said he wants his own special place. We'll make that happen. Uh, but this is going to be something that um, Breck has never had, okay. that it will be really great for Baton Rouge. And, um, you know, the zoo was aging yeah. back in 2004. The park system was aging. There's 175 parks. There's a lot to go. I don't think people realize um, how much y'all manage. But we have made a lot of progress. <laughs> All right, so summer is coming. Uh, I was just about to ask Sim Cinnamon how much time I had left. Um, summertime is coming mm -hmm. and get people to sign up. Let's talk a little bit about summer camps and why people need to engage it right now. So it's, you know, it's very important that kids when school is out have structured safe activity. Mm -hmm. Breck has, when you count zoo camp, over 300 opportunities for kids to be in a camp. Mm -hmm. They're all and over the parish. Yep. yep, and we started summer camp registration uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, some camps have waiting lists, but if you go to breck.org slash summer camp, mm -hmm. uh, you can see all that we have to offer. You can do a variety of things. Closest to your home, closest to your work, or you do the specialty camps, which are by age, so your child gets a different experience every week. And that's breck.org. Slash summer camp. Slash summer camp. Just in 10 seconds, I want to tell you, this lady is so amazing. She's been essential in a project that we're all working together on at Howell Park. We'll be able to talk about that in a few weeks. I appreciate you so much, and you are my favorite Michelet. Thank you. So next <laughs> week, we're going to talk a bit about crime in the Capital Region. Sheriff Sid Gotro and District Attorney Hiller Moore are both going to join me here on the show to talk about efforts to deal with the spike in violent crime since the beginning of the year. So you guys have a fantastic weekend, and we'll catch you next week right here on The Clay Young Show. And shout out to the Young Entrepreneurs Academy for having me MC with them last night. It was a great event. <laughs>